Uh, y'all know about Louis Heron Toyota? Y'all ever heard of Louis Heron Toyota? Mm -hmm. Commercials? A little bit? No? You ever heard of Louis Heron Toyota? Man, I need to advertise more out here. That's crazy. I spent too much money. Y'all don't even know. Well, I'm going to show you guys a video, and then I'm going to get into a little bit about just my background, and then I'm going to tell you about the automotive business. But, but this will be a little different than probably you, you, you've been sitting in some other ones. I promise you this will be probably completely different, which is hopefully a good thing. But uh, this video is about three minutes long, so just kind of hang with me, and, um, and then we'll get started. <laughs> It was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money, and so he went to this guru, right? He told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach. I didn't ask to be a lifeguard. I want to make money. He got me in. So he said, come on a little further. Walked out a little further. Then he had to run around in this area. This dope area. So this old man crazy. He made money, but he crazy. He said, come on out a little further. He came out a little further. Right in his mouth. My man, like, I'm about to go back in here. This guy is mine. So the old man said, I thought you said he wanted to be successful. He said, I do. He said, walk a little further. He came, dropped his head in, held him down, holding him down. My man didn't stretch it, holding him down. He had him held down just before my man was about to pass out. He raised him up. He said, I got a question for you. He told the guy, he said, when you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. I don't know how many of y'all got asthma here today, but if you ever had an asthma attack before, you're short of breath, that's so deep, shortness of breath, you wheeze it. The only thing you're trying to do is get some air. You don't care about no basketball game, you don't care what's on TV, you don't care about nobody calling you, you don't care about a party. The only thing you care about when you're trying to breathe is to get some fresh air, that's it. And when you get to the point where all you want to do is be successful, as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. And I'm here to tell you, number one, that most of you say you want to be successful, but you don't want it bad, you just kind of want it. You don't want it bad and then you want to party. You don't want it as much as you want to be cool. You, most of you don't want success as much as you want to sleep. Some of you want to sleep more than you want success. And I'm here to tell you that if you're going to be successful, you got to be willing to give up sleep. You gotta be willing to work up for three hours of sleep, two hours. If you really want to be successful, someday you will have to stay up three days in a row. Because if you go to sleep, you might miss the opportunity to be successful. That's how bad you gotta work. 
you gotta know days when I, listen to me, you gotta want to be successful so bad that you can get to eat. Beyonce said once she was on the set doing her thing, three days had gone by, she forgot she didn't eat. Because she was engaged. I'll never forget uh, when 50 Cent was doing the movie, I did a little research on 50, and 50 said that when he wasn't doing the movie, he was doing the soundtrack. And they said, when do you sleep, 50? Sleep, he said, sleep. Sleep is for those people who are broke. I'll sleep. So I got an opportunity to make a dream come to reality. Don't cry to quit. You already get pain. You already hurt. Get a reward from it. Don't go to sleep until you succeed. Listen to me. I'm here to tell you that you can come here. You can jump up. You can do good. You can be excited when we give away money. But listen to me, you will never be successful until I have to give you a dime. You won't be successful until you say, I don't need that money. Because I've got you here. because I think really it doesn't matter if it's automotive, it doesn't matter if it's real estate, it doesn't matter what you're going to do, um, it's all about being successful, right? I mean, that's, that's the whole point of going to school and getting education, so you can eventually, hopefully, go to college, and then when you go to college, the only reason why you go to college is so you can get a job, so you can do what? Make money, right? Be successful. So the reality is, is regardless of what you choose to do, the number one thing you need to do, regardless of the field you choose to go into, it all boils down to your psychology and how you think about becoming successful. And that's the bottom line. Your coaches, your teachers, a lot of people are teaching that along the way, but they're not cool enough for you to listen to. And I was in the same spot, so I get that. Hopefully, though, you guys will start to clue into some people that will be in your life that will really help you out. Because some kid asked me earlier, they said, hey, do you get paid to do this? I don't get paid to do this. Before I came here today, before I had a chance to speak to any kid, I'm always in, I'm always in deep thought and prayer about you guys. I said, I do it strictly for you guys. I do it strictly because I hope that maybe you guys can get inspired. Let me tell you a little bit about how I got started in the car business, a little bit about me, and then I'm going to tell you about the stuff you can do in the automotive business, okay? Um, I grew up in Miami, Florida, much like you guys. Um, possibly, I don't know, because I don't know you personally, but, um, you know, my home situation was, wasn't the best in the world, okay? My dad was there, but he wasn't really there. Uh, there was a lot of violence in the house. You know, he used, to, he used to, you know, you know, get upset at my mom and lay hands on her. Then, then I, then, then I get involved and, and lay hands on me and so forth. And you know, get my mom put in the halfway house. She's been in AA. I mean, I've seen a lot of stuff. In my report, you can see a lot of stuff. You can probably imagine. So there's a lot of things that I can probably relate more than you can imagine um, that I understand. So growing up, when I was coming up, I realized that that wasn't the house that I wanted to be in. So I left at 18 years old. I was going to be my own man. Left to the tune of what my dad would say. You know, uh, you'll be back. You know, he gave me two parties when I was 18: birthday, birthday party, and going away party. He used to say that when I was a kid, but he wasn't joking. I'm like, we did. So I left. So at 18 years old, I left, went, went to uh, Virginia. I played football at Liberty University for a year, um, and then I transferred to West Georgia. How I ended up in Georgia. Long story short, a lot of stuff in between that that time. But at the end of the day, I played four years of football and had two years left of school. There was a problem because I had some scholarship money. And I had some, uh, some grant money, all that kind of stuff. But the money was gone. But I still had two years left. So what would any normal kid do? Dropped out. That's what I did. I dropped out. So now I find myself, <clears throat> 20 years old, and I'm working at Lowe's, loading trucks on a graveyard shift. 6 p. to 6 a. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There was no fun time for Louie. I was, I, was, I was working Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 6 p.m. all the way to the night shift, loading and, sh and receiving... Uh, Shipping dock, doing a whole bunch of stuff with Lowe's packages and all that kind of stuff. Laborious job. And then during the week, I was waiting tables at Chili's. But I wasn't going anywhere. College football was done. I thought I was going to play football in the NFL. That was over with. That didn't make it. So now I was stuck to, to figure out what I'm going to do with my life. So eventually, I had a guy that said, listen, you need to sell cars. So I got in the car business at 20 years old. My dad's a roofer. And 17 years later, I own a car dealership. And just so you know about the automotive business, um, it's not something typically you can get unless your daddy passed it down to you or you have somebody that gives it to you. It's not normal that a guy just comes up 
and buys a car dealership. So I'm very fortunate. Uh, there's some things in here that I'm going to go over that I think is a very critical part of my success that I want to share with you. But that's a little bit about how, how I got started. I want to share with you a little bit about some of the most important factors for you guys as you guys want to get a job in the automotive business. And I would imagine the same thing would be true if you wanted to get a job anywhere. The first thing is you've got to have a high school diploma. That's no exception. No high school diploma, you're in trouble. I'm not saying you can't do it because anything can happen. But your chances are very, very slim and you're up against the wall. You've got to finish high school. And I know you guys hear that to you, blue in the face, right? Everybody tells you, you know, don't get nobody pregnant, don't get pregnant, don't do drugs, don't drop out of high school, right? You know what you hear all the time? There's truth to that, though. You really truly want to, want to focus in on that. The other thing is your appearance. If you're going to get a job, your appearance has to be right, okay? I love UFC. Love the sport. Guys all tatted up. I love the whole the whole engagement of one-on-one, -on -one, the willpower of a man. I love that stuff. But if you've got tattoos all over your place and you go to get a job, you can't get a job. If they're visible, no one's going to hire you. I grew up in South Florida. Nigerians, Colombians, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, blacks, whites, you name it. We had a baggy pants, tight pants, everything. We had all types of people. Bottom line is, if you go into a job with baggy pants, earrings, whatever the case may be, you have a hard time getting a job. Is there anything wrong with that? Of course not. If that's your style... If, that, if that's your swag, so to speak, then that's you. That's fine. But if you want to get a job, it's going to be hard for you to get a job with your appearance. Look at that. You've got to be sharp. You've got to make sure you're sharp. Background issues. Everybody makes mistakes. I make mistakes. I can tell you some stories that we sit here all day. Not proud of them, but stories. But if you have a background issue, you beat somebody up, went to jail, sold drugs, got in trouble, went to jail, any kind of felony, you are going to have a very hard time getting a job in the automobile business. And I would venture to say probably many other fields as well. These are the things you've got to be thinking about right now. It's unfair to you to a certain extent because you've got to think about that right now. That's five, eight years from now. But you've got to be thinking about it because at the end of the day, you're the one that's responsible for that. The other thing that's an important factor when you're going to interview for a job or you're trying to get a job is your attitude, enthusiasm, your confidence. Those are the things that are extremely important. Confidence. Confidence is like, is like the killer of all people. Y'all don't know that, but... Now we get to a point where we ask questions here in a minute, I'm going to say, okay, I need a volunteer. And it's going to be just like that. But if I had a bunch of kindergartners here, I said, okay, I need a volunteer. How many come up to the front? Oh, All of them. Bum rush you, man. You want to be involved. As you get older, you lose that. Because it ain't cool to get involved. Here's the sad part about it is as you get older, you're my age, you're 35, <laughs> it gets worse. And the problem when it gets worse as an adult, it affects your money. Because when you sit on the sidelines of life and don't go for something, that affects your pocketbook. Because the only way you get something big in life is you've got to go for it. You've got to find a way to go for it over and over and over and over. So you've got to have that confidence. Let's talk about the car business opportunities. Before you walk into, this, into the room, I'm sure you thought automotive. I saw some of you come in and you're like, okay, what's this? What's this? What's, ooh, I don't want to automotive. What's automotive? I don't want to. You don't even know what automotive is, right? A whole bunch of stuff in automotive. It's not just selling cars or working on cars. There's sales, accounting. Customer relations, business development, let me stop right there. Some of you ladies, and there is more ladies we had in the whole, in the whole sessions that we talked about, but then if you're, if you're tight with details and you don't have to be in the automotive business strictly to sell cars, you can be in the accounting office. You can be in customer relations. Candace works for me. She don't sell cars. Does a great job. You can be a technician. If you like to take apart things and put things together, make a lot of money. And I'm explaining how you make money there. Service riders. These are the guys that when you have a problem with your car, you come into the service department. These are the guys that come out and greet you and say, hey, I'm going to help you. What's going on with your car? And they kind of talk about what's going on. So that's a service rider, okay? How do you get paid from that? I'll go over that. Administrative assistant, title clerks, receivables, payables. If you're really, really good, you can go to management. Detail, like clean cars. You can do that. You can manage detail department, quarter, a lot of tenants. So there's a lot of things you can do in the car business, okay? Let's continue on here. All right. What, number one question I get. How much money do you make? I won't get into my personal finances, but let me tell you how much money that can be made in the car business. And it varies depending on where you live. In Milledgeville, Athens, Macon, give or take, in that area, somewhere between seven, eight bucks an hour, if you're just starting off, depending on where you want to go, you're up to $100,000, $120,000 selling cars. You have some technicians that make $75,000, $80,000 working on cars. And by the way, there are lady technicians. There are lady technicians. They're typically very, very detailed and do a pretty good job. So it's not excluded just, just for guys. There's, there's some folks in Atlanta, some car salespeople that make nearly half a million dollars a year selling cars. Do you believe that? Do you imagine that? 
Could you imagine how much your life would change if you made it half a million dollars a year? The reality is, is most people in a room half a million dollars, you can't even see it. It's you. Make me 30, I'll be good. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to believe that you can get something like that. That's the first thing. That's the first thing. You can make some really, really, really good money. There's nothing wrong with $30,000 a year. There ain't nothing wrong with that. Okay? But what I was talking about is, is trying to get you guys to think of what you can achieve as far as greatness. Financially, that is. Your attitude affects your altitude, okay? You get it. In any automotive business, in any business, you know, I always say the adage, you can't go from fries to the Whopper Flopper. You don't get promoted if you ain't doing it right. Okay? you got to act right. you got to make sure that you're doing the right thing. Here's a critical piece that most people don't ever do. They worry about getting a job. There's a difference between a job and a career. Here's the difference. If, you, if you're chasing a career, the career normally has something to do with you. You're passionate. Okay? Look at Missy, LeBron, Usher. Justin, these guys have passion, don't they? Yeah, they're excited. Why can't y'all have it? Because it ain't cool, because people watch it. Oh, what if this? If I do this, what if that? It's called scenario sickness. It's a killer. It's a bad disease, scenario sickness. you got to have passion within you to get what you want. You don't want a job. If you get a job, I'm happy for you, because it's better than not having one, right? But y'all want a career, man. Y'all want a career, something that you can love to do. Could you imagine... Going to work every day, getting paid for something you love, you can do that. You can really do that. Okay? So what I would tell you is find the talent that you have naturally within you, something that you love to do. Only you know about it. Whatever it is, stay on that. I don't care what anybody ever tells you about what you can do with that or all oh, that's crazy. If you love it, you do it. You stick with it. Okay? And you go for it and you achieve it. Let's talk about some of the some of the some of the problems though. Some of the troubles. Anybody in some troubles right now? Is your family Economic trouble? Anybody have is, is, is some troubles going on? Have you seen some troubles? People have bad situations? This right here is the number one reason why you will fail or you will make it. I'm a Christian and love the Lord. My whole basis is on the Lord, okay? So I'm not, I'm not preaching at you, okay? But I'm telling you my perspective is this. In the Bible, in James, it says, when trouble comes your way, count it all joy. Here's the cool part about that verse. It don't say if it comes your way. Or it may come your way. What does it say? He says, when? The storm's coming. The storm's going to come. So the key's going to be is, you got an umbrella? You got the car to get into? To keep you from the rain? Or you got the umbrella? The storm's coming. Your psychology's going to determine your success. A lot of people tell me my whole life, man, Louie, why are you so positive? How do you do it? Let me tell you something, in case you may not know this. I wasn't born as an energetic, enthusiastic, positive baby. I didn't come out of the womb just ready to go. It's trained, 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 conditioned, conditions, over and over and over. And here's the thing. If you don't train yourself, your friends will train you. That's what happens. If you don't train yourself, your friends will train you. So you've got to train yourself. That's why I gravitate so much towards athletes. Because there's so much time and work and effort, so much put into that. That's not to exclude the military. That's not to exclude other people that, that are just as driven. People in the entertainment business. Like the guy was talking in the video, 50 Cent. The guy was talking, he didn't have no time to sleep. He said, sleep is for broke people. That's what 50 said. I didn't say it. You know what I'm saying? So it's very important that you guys know how to handle circumstances when they, when they come your way. Let me tell you about some, some keys, my keys, that I think are important, and then we'll, add, and then we'll have some questions. Number one key is you've got to keep God first. That's the bottom line. People, again, will ask me, how did you get a car dealership? How did you do it? And I'll say, I'll say the Lord did. I said, I was blessed. Had God's favor. Well, how do you have God's favor? I was obedient. Not all my life. Not all my life. But when I flipped that switch and I realized what I want to do, then I became obedient. See, well, see God will bless you if you do right. Y'all know that? If you do right, he'll bless you. God will bless you if you do right. That's, that's, that's how that works. Okay? And what you sow is what you reap. So if we sow stupid, we're going to get stupid, right? You're going to sow good things, sow right things, create win-win situations for everybody around you. That's hard to do in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the life that we live because you know why? Ain't nobody looking out for you. So when no one looks out for you, why are you going to look out for anybody else, right? That's, what normal people, that's a normal feeling. But you've got to rise above that. You've got to rise above that because when you're doing right, you're going to get blessed. 
Graduate at all costs. Guys, listen to me. If you don't take anything away out of this video, you've got to graduate. You've got to graduate. I don't care how tough it is. All right? I didn't even get over 700 SAT. I was not that smart. Okay? I couldn't even go to the college of my choice and get a scholarship like I wanted to because I wasn't that smart. And I probably wasn't that good either, if I was honest with myself. The bottom line was, is I did graduate. You've got to graduate. Don't let anything stop you from graduating. The other thing I'll tell you is be involved in activities. That's cool, let's leave. He's high. Just get on a pillow. You gotta have some activities. You gotta have activities in your life, man. You gotta have some sports. Alright? If it's music you like, whatever it is, you gotta have activities. Don't go to school and then come home and do nothing. Be in a band, be in activities, be in ROTC or whatever, whatever it is, be in some extracurricular activities that keep you occupied, okay? The other thing is push yourself beyond your limits. This is one thing that I got a seven and a ten year old. And I tell my kids all the time, at 7 and 10 years old, whenever I see them in a fearful situation, I push them through it all the time. I make them do it. My wife's even worse. My wife's even worse about that. My one time my daughter was in a swim meet. She didn't want to get off the block. She's on that block. She's like this. She started crying. My wife was like, right up to her. Bam. Dropped her in the water. She was scared she couldn't swim. My wife said, there you go. You know what she did? She swam. She swam. Here comes the second meet coming around, right? She on the block again. Uh, uh, crying again. Right? Mama looks at her. Just give her that look. Uh, she didn't even have to get thrown in this time. You know what she did that time? She won. She won. The point is, when you find yourself in a fearful situation, that's when you do it. That's the only time you stretch and grow. Had we let our daughter, come on, baby, it's okay. You don't need to do it if you don't want to. It's okay. Would she have grown? Then there would have grown. He credits my wife for that. You've got to put yourself in the situation. Is there any situation that you guys run across where you guys get nervous and scared? And chances are you, you, you turn from it sometimes, right? Is that true? I mean, what, some, I mean I've, I've done it. Not every time, but you just kind of go, eh, I ain't going to do that. Time you want to answer something or do something, and you go, oh, no. I, people may make fun or... Right? So you've got to learn to do that. Push yourself beyond your limits. That's why you see some of these athletes all the time. They keep pushing, pushing, pushing. The point where they lean over like this, and they just throw up. And some people go, man, why are they doing that? Well, how would somebody push themselves to throw up? Because the only way you can grow is you've got to get out of your comfort zone and get your uncomfortable zone. And you really want to grow? That's where you got to get to the panic zone. That's where some serious stuff happens there. Put yourself in a panic zone, you see some serious growth. I promise you that. So... Anyways, questions about what I do, car business in general. You guys chose automotive, right? So let me get a volunteer. I got no volunteers? You got a volunteer? Come here. Come over here. Come on. I'm going to bust you off something, bro. I'm going to bust you off 20. That's for volunteering, bro. You know why? Check this out. Yeah. Hey, dog, you get in the game. That's what you get. People get paid when they get in the game. You hear me? You got a question? <laughs> there you go. Let me see what your question is. <laughs> Buddy, they cost millions. But I didn't, I didn't write a check for all that. I went and borrowed money. And, and nobody ain't nobody have a chance to get that, that. You know, you can try to buy a car dealership. Very few people have that, that kind of money. You got to go borrow it. I need a volunteer. Oh! <laughs> Something could be you. Hey, something could be you, but you know what? You step back and let somebody else get it. What happens is if you let someone step out in front of you too many times, that becomes a habit. You need it this way. You need it? No. Huh? Actually, that's the first one. That's the first one. So you plan on getting out much more, you know, for the day. It depends. Depends how crazy you want to get it. If you want to get outside your box. You want to get uncomfortable in front of the class, do something crazy. No? Not crazy. See, you don't want it that bad. <laughs> that's the thing. You gotta want it bad. That's what success is. You gotta want it bad enough to where you ain't worried about other people. See, some people in life, check this out. Some people in life aren't real happy, but they're not unhappy enough to make a difference. 
Some people ain't real happy, but they ain't unhappy enough to do something about it. You know? <laughs> what other questions do you have? What you? You picked automotive. What were you thinking? Oh, I did. Oh, you did? I'm thinking for a minute myself. You got any kind of questions about the car business? How about man sleeping? What's he want? I got some questions about the rolling You know what I mean? Which one? I ain't gonna lie to you. Look. Okay, you pick your vote, don't you? Don't you pick your vote to like to work on your car and stuff like that? Yeah. You know, who have the good and debt position, who have the good and debt position and everything like that? That's right. Okay. What if one day that person don't know what they're doing? They're like, they say they met with the motor, they did everything they could to it. They put it on the computer, and the computer said it right, but it's still messing up. That's a good question. How do you, how you work with that person to get the, get the material and all that? They pay for it. He, he, his question, if I understand you correctly, you got somebody that works on cars, typically does a good job, he, he diagnoses the car, and the car doesn't work right, and they let the customer leave and come back at the same problem, and, they, and it's not working. Fire. Typically, no, you don't fire somebody. But typically, they're accountable to that because really, I don't work on cars. So if I pay you to work on my cars, I pay you to get the education, the knowledge, to be able to take the test, to understand, and diagnose a car. So if I got a customer walks in, okay, and they're walking into Louis Heron Toyota, okay, and they leave there unhappy. They're thinking Louis Heron Toyota ain't a bad thing. They worry about you. They worry about my reputation online for what you do or, or that technician. So it's very, very important that if somebody makes a mistake, they got to pay for it. I would never charge. So I, you don't kind of work for me to, to, to pay me nothing, but. There has to be something in place to where a technician knows that if it's not fixed right the first time, they gotta they gotta eat some of the some of the expense, whether it's a percentage of it. So they know, you know, they gotta they gotta pay. Because a lot of times how technicians get paid, most people don't know this. How technicians are paid is they work a 40-hour week, but they can get paid for 80. And how that happens is every job is out of a book. And it says transmission job, eight hours, engine job, 12 hours. Well, if a technician's good, he can do the job in four hours, but he still gets paid for the eight. So what happens is, is if he does some, if he works 40 hours, but he's done enough jobs to where he can get paid for 60, but he didn't do some of the jobs right, he should have slowed down and do the job right to begin with. Does that make sense? So that's a good question. So they just basically they, they So you get a limit. So you get a limit got don't get those you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I mean I work with people. I mean, I'm not gonna, you know, people are gonna make mistakes. I mean I wouldn't, you know, not everybody, you know, you're gonna make mistakes. What you watch for is trends. How often is the same guy making the same mistake? Yeah. What, uh, what other questions you got? Go ahead. Okay, do you just chill in your office? Or you just go out and sit here too? <laughs> how you see me right here is how I am all day. <laughs> Customers, employees, I'm jacking people up every day. All day. Car you don't sell in the day. Personally, the dealership. I don't sell I don't sell any cars anymore like I used to, personally. You know, because I'm overseeing the whole store. But we, we don't we don't sell as many as I want to. We sell about three or four cars a day. But I've been in dealerships in Atlanta, when I was in Atlanta, we'd sell 45, 50 in a day. You got Say it again. But you still live with that twenty, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> still want that twenty. <laughs> Listen, I do. I, I I do have money, but I will tell you this: I've saved it. Okay, I've invested it. I've lost it. I've made bad decisions. I mean, no, seriously. I mean, to be real honest with you. I, I, listen, anybody who makes money should never feel ashamed of that or embarrassed of that. You know, but a lot of people, like I always say, they a lot of people know the glory. They see the dealership and all that kind of stuff, but they don't know the story. They don't know what I had to go through to get to it. And the same thing with you guys. Some of you guys are going to achieve great things. And people are going to say, oh, yeah, look at you, so lucky, man, look at you. They don't know you. They have no idea what you went through. They don't know what drama you went through. They don't know how long you've been on your own. They don't know how much time you spent to, you know, to, to, to um, work on your craft. I was telling the last group, talent is God-given, but skill is developed. So you gotta develop your skills. Interruption. I need the following students to report immediately to the office. Artie Hackney and Demarcus Alexander. So, so um, I had all that money that I would buy like a grocery store. You never go broke. <laughs> Tell me. Like I'll buy really Ingles. good credit for a car dealership. I'll buy Ingles. You must have really good credit for a car dealership. I had bad credit for a long time, but I worked on it. I had bad credit, man. I had bad credit, but yeah, I, but it, you know, I mean, I'm 37 now. When I was 20, I had bad credit. It took me a long time to fix it, but you can fix your credit. You can fix it. Yes. If you dropped out of college and you're just selling cars, do you necessarily need to go to college to sell cars? Um. Well, no. You don't need college to sell cars. College. 
college helps you become more well-rounded, number one. College helps you um, when you're applying for a job. When I'm looking at two people that want to come get a job, sell cars, and I've got someone like yourself that, that didn't graduate college, i got someone else. Same qualifications, same age, new job, whatever the case may be, did graduate college. I'm more likely to choose the person with college initially for one reason. Because if you've had the discipline to finish high school and had the discipline to finish college, then you probably had the discipline to do some of the things I'm going to ask you to do. Does that make sense? Not because I think someone's more qualified. In fact, there are some people that have a lot of street smart, that are phenomenal car people. Yeah. But they're not that smart in the book. I mean, I, I mean, I'm one of those. I think I'm a pretty decent car person. I'm a pretty, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a very intuitive. I can read people and I can roll with them. No matter who you are, I can get down with you. But I, I'm not that smart. I'm not going to tell you that I'm that, that's, that I'm that smart. I can tell you that. So how long have you been sitting up? Uh, this is my 18th year. So... I got in when I was 20. When do you plan on retiring? Uh, I'm not. I'm not going to retire. So when you... Let me tell you, look, there's three, remember I told you there's three, there's three levels of people live, survival, success, and significance, mm -hmm. right? Okay, my whole thing, the only reason I'm talking to you guys here today is honestly, I'm just, my whole goal is when I die and I'm done, I have the ability to be able to infect people's lives in a positive way. That's my whole focus, so period. When, yeah, when you pass, you know, That's what I'm, hey, that's a good point. Look, here's the deal. When I'm talking to you and you go through other things in life and you always hear the old cliche, you're all the next generation. Y'all hear that? Sports, uh, <laughs> right? All right? Y'all may think that's BS, but, and I don't mean BS like you think. I'm talking about belief system. All right? Your, your belief system, <laughs> all right, is y'all think that's all just you're the next generation. The reality is you are. If, if some of y'all are the next fireman, policeman, if you ain't in, in the Congress, if you ain't the next teachers, if you ain't the next people that's going to communicate to the next generation, who's going to do it? You've got to do it. And that's why it's so important when I talk about, let me tell you something. When I was in, when I was in school, I remember like it was yesterday. I'd be sitting in this class like this, and the teacher would be talking, and we'd be reading. And, and we had, I don't know if you guys still do this, but we'd have to read. Like, like you'd have to go, then she'd go, then you'd go, then you'd go. Oh, man. So I, I'd look up, and, and I'd see, okay, I'd count up everybody, and I'd count up the paragraphs, and I'd figure out which paragraph was mine. And you know I was going to the bathroom about two paragraphs before I got to go to the bathroom. And I never like to get in front of people. I don't like to eat. I never like to stand up in front of people. I never like to talk in front of people. I never wanted to read out loud, anything like that. All right? So what you see today is a product of me pushing myself outside my comfort zone, okay? I can speak in front of kids that, you know, six, eight hundred kids. That's nerve-wracking. Y'all are a tough crowd. Kids are hard to... To, to win over, you know? I, mean, I remember when I was in school, we'd have assemblies. If the cat wasn't cool within the first two or three minutes, I wasn't going to listen to him. And I don't think that's changed very much. And I don't think that I'm very cool, but I'm just saying it's, it's you guys have to push yourselves to, to go beyond, and you got to be the next person to step up. It's your job. Can you do it? Yeah, I come take over. Can you do it? Can you come take over? What other questions? How about you? You're over here quiet. Any questions? Because you're scared, right? Hold on a second. I bet I can get a question out of you. I'm scared. I'm out. Man, y'all. Hey, how do you like persuading somebody to buy a car? Like, it's a. They come in and want a big car, but they don't got no money. You know, it. it <coughs> No, it, it, start, it, it starts with, 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 a good, with a good interview process. I sit down with you and we talk about what your needs are, what you got to have, what you can live without. We talk about what you're currently driving and what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. And then we start to navigate around the whole thing. Look, if your credit's like this or your money's like this or your payments are like this, you know, these are the cars you can afford. If I try to put you on this car, it's going to cost you more. At the end of the day, when we're all done, you're going to be upset because you're going to pay more than you came here to pay. So would you like to go with these cars that are that, more in your budget or do you want to go with cars you really like? It's going to cost you more. I make the customer decide. But let them know up front. You just don't want to. The thing is, you want to. You, you want to be a, a good giver. Again, go back to sowing and reaping. You just want to give customer information. Give them what they need to make a good decision. Help them. If you try to get over on somebody one time, the old adage is you can you can uh, skin a sheep one time, but you can shear it many times. You don't want to skin somebody. That's bad business, man. You want to have people that come back over and over and over. It's like someone cuts your hair. You don't go to eight people to cut your hair. You go to one person. That one person touches your hair. You go to one dentist. Any business. For me. I'm wanting to deal with people that they know that, oh, that car from Louie. That's the only player. That's the only person I deal with. Period. When you're there, then you'll be all right. That's the whole goal. You've got to treat people right. You've got to be honest. 
A lot of people have a bad reputation in the car business for lying. You ain't got to lie to somebody to sell a car. It's no secret. I'm going to make money. I'm going to make money. I ain't got to get rich on the deal, but I won't make a little, I'll make a little bit. Everybody knows that. So you just, you know, get on the internet, help the customer research the car, buy what's good for them, and... Uh, so you want grit. You did it. Yeah, yeah. No, man. No. No. In fact, in fact, greed is a killer. Again, the Bible talks about the love of money is the root of all evil. It doesn't say money's evil. It says the love of it. It's a big difference. The love of money is the root of evil. Money ain't evil. All right? But it's the love of it. It's that greed of it. It's the greed. You've got to watch that greed because it'll get you. What you realize is the more you give of yourself and give money, the more you actually make. You actually get more in return by the more you give, which most people don't believe that because they think, man, I can't give what I've made. This is my little, this is my little pouch. I can't give any of it. When you close down, you just close the receptors of receiving. So that's not where you want to be. You want to be, you want to be where it's all coming to you, right? The only way you get it coming to you is you got to give it back out. What else you got? How much more time we got? Uh, about ten minutes. Ten minutes. Would I hire someone tattoo? Yeah, I would if I couldn't see it. As long as it wouldn't show up on somebody's neck or something, you know, as long as it's not, you know, something. If I couldn't see it, I would. Yeah. Well, I'm not pre Listen, I'm not prejudiced the way somebody looks. I've seen a lot of people that can that can flat out get it done. I don't care what people look like. I care what the part they have. Like some sleeves. Like, That's what I'm know, saying. It's a it's a, it, listen, the thing is, I can't have. Listen, you don't want to have an environment where customers walk in and they feel intimidated or they're prejudiced. Because you know how it is. People walk in, they see somebody, and they're on that, ooh. Unfortunately, it's ignorance, but that's how they are. So I, I can't have people coming in looking with tattoos all the way down their arms and all that kind of stuff. But if it's not visible, guy can have eight tattoos. As long as I can't see them, I'm okay with that. I don't have a problem with tattoos. So, you provide somebody? Huh? You ever find somebody? A bunch. So, like, um, how do they take it? Like, what you say to them? You probably... Huh? Like, um, what you say to them? Like, how you... Like, uh, how do you come it just depends. It really does. Every situation is different. I mean, I've had people mad. I've had, I've had people cry. I mean, I've had people do all kinds of things and they get fired. You lose your job. Think about this for a second. You don't feel if you, Yeah, I feel awful. I feel, I feel awful because we should, it shouldn't get to that point. But normally, if you're firing somebody, you made a bad hiring decision to begin with, or you didn't train them. One of the two things. Either you, you shouldn't have hired the guy to begin with, or you didn't train them as well as you should have. Either way, it's the boss's responsibility if someone gets fired. That's my opinion. If I fire somebody, we didn't do. If I fire somebody because my manager's hired somebody, then I'm mad at my manager because either a you didn't train them or we shouldn't have hired them to begin with. You know, but you know every situation is different. I mean, normally if someone's going to get fired, if you're a manager in any situation, especially if you're like have a family, you have the you could change somebody's life like that. You don't take that lightly. You can't come in and have somebody come in and get two kids and you're just going. You know, they're going to fire them. They have no clue what's coming. That ain't, that, that's, that's terrible. That's not good business. How you fire somebody is you let them know, you and I are talking. I'm going to call you in my office. Let's have a conversation. I'm having an issue with these two or three things. It's not you personally, but I've got something going on that I don't agree with the way we're doing it. I need you to work on it. Are you with me? Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, great. I'm going to write it up. Make sure we had a conversation. We're good. High five. Rock on. Let's do it. Two months later, hey, dude, we're having a problem again. You and I discuss. Let me get that old writer. Let me see what I said. Yep, that's what I said. Same thing. We're going to talk about it one more time. I'm going to write it up. Are you on the same page? Do you want to be here? What's the deal? No, I'm with you. I got you. Okay, good. I'm going to write it up. Listen, next time, it won't be a write-up. Next time, you're going to have to go. Are you tracking? I'm tracking. All right, bro. Have a good day. Let's rock and roll. That's it. That way, if someone comes up for the third time, they already know I'm coming to walk me green mile. What's up? They already know the deal. They already know. I, and I don't feel bad about that one because I'm working with the person, and I want to help them get the help they need to make sure they don't get fired. You don't want to fire them. It costs an employer tons of money to hire somebody. Tons of money to train them, insure them. Tons of money, you know, it's, it's too costly. You all do health benefits and all that? We do. Like we, do. we do. We do everything with 401k. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. 18. Yeah. How long you got to be going in and starting to drink all the things you eat then you move one mountain to this week? He's good. He's good. Yeah, again, I was, I was 20. 22 is the manager, so yeah, I don't know. I fault the age thing, so I'm kind of weak when it comes to young people. I'll try to help you keep moving. Go ahead. How old do you got to be working? 18. We're 16 to get a job, but 18 typically. What's the number one problem you have with employees? The number one problem I have with employees is entitlement. And 
car business, people feel entitled because you have uh, bonuses. And sometimes what happens in life is, is benefits become entitlement. In other words, when you get something for a certain period of time. I had a lady one time, check this out, this is a true story. I had a lady, we don't like to have overtime because, you're, because expenses are tight. So we had someone not have um, the rules not have overtime unless it's approved by me. Somehow, some way, this, this girl had overtime for five months. So I was asleep at the switch. I wasn't looking at my expense. I finally look at it. I'm like, hey, what, what, how, five months? What's going on? We've got to tell her we can't have any overtime. Well, the benefit of her getting overtime to her, she felt entitled to. Yeah. So we had a conversation. We said, look, we can't, can't afford to pay overtime. You've got to get the job done in the 40 hours that you're allotted. That's what you've got to get it done. Oh, that's not going to work. Y'all cut my pay. We'll cut your pay. It's overtime. Mom, what do you mean? Well, I got bills. I bought this, and I bought this, and I bought that. That's, well, that ain't, that ain't mine. You bought them. I, you know the rules over. We let you work overtime as a benefit. But now you feel entitled to the benefit. This, this lady went on. She was so mad about it. She was so salty for probably five months. Sue. No, she didn't sue. She had check writing ability. She wrote a check for a dealer trade for another car. That was a fake car that they tried to catch with the guy in the detail shop. And the teller caught him, took a picture of him so we knew who it was. She went to jail because she tried to steal $18,000. But that's an extreme example. But when you say employee issues, what you have is a lot of people, it's human nature to want something for nothing. That's human nature. It's tough to work hard. You know, and then life's not fair on top of that, and you're supposed to still work hard. Most people don't have that stamina. They don't have that psychology. That's the issues we have with them with employees. They, they want and want and want, but they don't want to do what it takes to get it. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of, you know, that's 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 one of the things that we, that we go through. But I know what it is. Huh? I don't know if she went Oh man, I don't remember, bro. I can't remember. She was in there for a minute though. For real. She was in there for a while. That's a bit I mean that's 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 Have you seen that's, when that's she got out. Huh? You seen when she got out? No. She didn't want to see me. <laughs> she didn't want to see me, I promise. Okay. Well, I see you know, I hear I hear a story. I hear the story. But I won't I won't ask you something. Everybody sit tight. Everybody sit tight. I need the officers of FFA, FCCLA, FBLA, HOSA, and the Senior General OTC Leadership Team, please come to the front office. The officers of the CTSOs, please come to the front office. Thank you. Go ahead. Would it, uh, like, a new, like a new company, like right across the street from you, Jim? Pop up, and you got competition, and like you say, they make a better car than you, like a better thing than you. But you got to, like, would you ever cheat? And like, would you put like put stuff in your car to make it better? Oh, competition makes you better. It's no different if you if you you know if you if you play in football or something. No, I'm just saying. Look, somebody pops from the block. You get one of them. <laughs> look, 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 somebody pops like really did pop up right now and just make more money than me. He's doing something. I might just put some of my cars there and make it there. Won't. <laughs> 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 now, I don't work. Look, let me tell you what the problem with car, with car sale people. This is his, his point. Most car sales people, all they're worried about is the customers, if the customers are committed to buying a car. That's all they care about. Where I teach them, all I want you to be committed, don't worry if they're buying a car. Okay? And it's the same thing with what you're saying. When I have competition, if something comes up down the street or something, I'm not worried about them. I'm just worried about my commitment level, make sure I'm doing the right thing, make sure I'm doing everything I can do to make sure that my staff's getting paid and that we're selling cars. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right, what else? That's it? You're quiet. Why'd you choose automotive? Got stuff here? What, do you want to do, work on them or sell them or what? 